Anyways, what to full effing sports coming at you with full effing force like none other. Tonight, we're down two dudes. Only half of the Watu Generals are here this evening. But well, we can shoot the shit on sports. You know it. You like know nobody's it. business. I mean, we do it on a regular anyway. basis at D&D from our 9 to 5, so why not do it on camera for the lovely folks at home? Because, you know what, we got to stay loyal to you guys. You die hard to us. We got to be die hard to you. So we're going to bring it to you the best we can. Damn right. Anyways, full up in sports. Let's get it rolling. Probably be quick this evening because we only got two opinions. But aside from that, uh, first thing I want to go off, and uh, I'm looking kind of forward to it, but uh, Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson, Dun dun. Magic dun dun. We all know dun dun. MJ, the original MJ, the first MJ. Magic. That dominated the Lakers squad. Part of Showtime. Dominated it with Kareem and who else was James it? Worthy. Worthy. Oh, yeah, Kim Michael Cooper. Worthy. Rocking Byron the Rex Scott. Bench, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, great teams back there. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Oh, yeah. What was his original name? Lou Alcindor or something like Lou that? Lou Alcindor. Back in the day of the Irvin, UCLA days or Cal days. Magic Johnson. Either way. Uh, I guess he's teaming up with the Guggenheim Partners Agency or something. I just remember Guggenheim because I laughed my ass off when I heard it. But uh, to buy the Los Angeles Dodgers. Interesting. Now, it makes complete sense considering, like we just said, he was a legend in L.A. And, oh, yeah, uh, the, you know, the, the Lakers there. He yeah. was quoted as saying, you know, it, it's a stupid idea not even to think about the possibilities. We all know the Dodgers are in a certain <coughs> situation. Yeah, they I mean, the whole money, Frank McCourt situation you know? and his wife, they split up and they're trying to divide the team and it's made for a whole mess. And more importantly, you know, Magic, let him get in there. He's a smart business guy. Put together a team. Because Donnie Baseball deserves that's, better. Yes, that's what pisses you know me mean? off the most and about got, it. And they got a good lineup. Matt Kemp was almost MVP. Clayton Kershaw won the Cy Young. Yes, he did. So you got pieces in place. Andre Ethier needs to get his head out of his ass and actually play some baseball. <laughs> There's rumors they might try to push for Prince Fielder, hey, which would definitely give him some pop. That would be definitely Give him a pop. first baseman. You know what I mean? Because yeah. James Loney don't cut it. I, I was waiting to see number 23 trot out there, throw the stash back and play it himself because yeah. it was just disappointing. You know, this is coming from a Yankees fan, which is pretty quiet on a Yankees front since we're in the baseball talk. A little disappointed. Nothing, no rumors, no nothing. Pitching's a little spooky. And now you got the Red Sox coming around with this Bobby V signing. Bobby Valentine. <laughs> Good luck. Supposed, the supposed creator of the so-called rap that yeah. you eat for lunch. Yeah, okay, pal. You know, yeah. Prove it. What are you sure. going to do? Honestly, I mean, what has that guy done in his career? What, he rocked with the Mets there for a little bit? What do they do? Yeah, he put on a fake mustache when he got kicked out of a game. He wasn't, he wasn't, there, uh, he wasn't there for that Subway series with the Yankees, right? Was that him? No? Uh, uh, it might have been. Didn't win it, though. Yeah. You know, I think he got him to two wild card playoffs. I'm not sure, but he didn't do there much. You go. Wild card. And, you know, you when he was in Texas, he was with a bunch of losers over there. So, Red Sox Nation, eat it up. He's all yours. Oh, go yeah. for it. Have fun. I have lots of high hopes for... Probably being what third place. Yeah, gonna keep it for uh, the AL East is just gonna be Yanks and Rays all yeah. year long, man. I mean, they have no the, stopping it. Red Sox haven't done anything either. It's been a real quiet winter so far in terms of baseball. Yeah, dude. so far they got they got Valentin, but they lost Pavel Bunt. So to the but, fucking Phillies, goddamn it! <laughs> it's just gonna be weird seeing that chunky bastard with little P on his head. Yeah, you know. But speaking of moves and trades, we go to uh, the NBA. It's back in session. Free agency started. Season starts on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Yeah, I guess there's but, a couple uh, more games been added too, so it's no longer three. It's like five, six, something like that. So the thing now, though, that I keep hearing about is where's Chris Paul going to go? Because they say he's not going to stay in New Orleans. Hornets, you know, had a good team a couple years ago. Really been shit on. He's been there seven years. He's only gotten to the playoffs once deep. And uh, they haven't really done much other than that. Where do you see him going? The thing is, they say he wants to go to either New York to play with Carmelo and Armare, or he's going to try to team up with Dwight Howard and go somewhere else to create another little superpower. See, that'd be pretty great. I know he definitely ain't going to Miami because I don't know how they're going to pull money out their ass I for mean, that. Well, Although, I tell you what, if he did, holy shit. Well, that new know? deal they made is going to make it very hard for Miami to procure talent because there's going to be stiff luxury taxes. It's going to really put a, a, a hit on structuring your payroll. So Miami's got to do it this year because... They're already rumbling that the big three might have to get split up. If you know this year, they'll probably try to make a run, but going into the next year, Chris Bosh might get shipped out of there. I don't see it working. I mean, they, they might win a title or two, but LeBron and Dwayne are two similar players, slashers that attack the hole yep. and kind of do it all, rebound, assist the whole nine yards. 
and two players that are almost the same don't necessarily mesh well together. No, no they don't. And, you know, I mean, maybe see, they'll I win mean, this year. I don't want to see them win it. But. That's the same thing they try to say about the Celtics is, oh, you know, that's too many egos clashes. Like, no, you have Kevin Garnett, who's the, you know, powerhouse underneath the rim. He's a nasty little uh, point shooter. Not a three-point shooter, but I'm saying, like, low post or whatever. Paul Pierce is the all-around slasher, and Ray Ray's the three-baller. Oh, yeah. And you I know, love so, the Celtics. I mean, I love the Celtics. But the power in the East right now has to be – the Miami Heat. I mean, and I, you know, I loved it when they didn't win the title last year. Oh yeah, I love it again I this year if it. they don't win the title. But you know, give credit where credit is due. These are three guys that got together, never had played together before. They still made it to the, the championship. They still were the Eastern Conference champions. So I mean, first year together, you pull that off. That's an impressive little run right there. But Chicago, Carlos Bozer, Derrick Rose coming back, trying to repeat his MVP season last year. So, you know, I mean, those are the two scary teams in the East for me. You look at the East, I see Miami, Chicago, Boston. Boom, 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 in that order. And you go out to the West, you got the Lakers, Dallas, because they're the champions. And you got the Lakers, you know, and then Oklahoma City. Yeah, Oklahoma City. So those are probably the top six teams right there. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's going to be an interesting year, and it all comes to fruition (laughs) Christmas Day, which, you know, I'm stoked, you know. Unbelievably stoked. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't stoked. make enough money at the D&D, so there ain't be no Christmas for me. I'm going to get cable turned back on, and I'm going to watch a little basketball. Fucking A, you know, dude. Eat some food. That's all you can do. Yeah, exactly. Hey, anyways, exactly. moving right along. Since we've covered uh, baseball, basketball, let's, let's just throw it out there. NFL, our big blue. You know what no. I'm saying? We're on a little bit of a slump, you know, so we got to let the world know. Yeah, I know. we got the, you know, the Packers coming up. When this comes out, we'll probably have already lost to the Packers because that team is – I'm actually kind of amazed. Yeah, like start calling. We probably already oh. lost to them, but they're actually predicting that we could be the team that ends that dominance they got going. And they're saying that because it. of what we did to the Patriots a couple of years ago, and yeah. it's true. I mean, on any given Sunday, anything can happen. The Giants are talented. There's just been a lot of key injuries and a lot of poor play, sloppy play. The running game is horrible, which is yeah. a shock for a Giants team because usually our basis is defense pressuring the quarterback and running the ball to control yeah. the clock. And we're not doing that this year. Nope. So that's a problem. And it'll get corrected when the right piece is in place. And Mont Bradshaw's missed four or five games. Yeah, he's the just defense dissipated. is struggling. We lost Terrell Thomas for the whole year. Michael Bowley's been hurt off and on, off and on, off and on. O.C. got hurt last week. Justin Tuck's been hurt off and on all year. He's only got two sacks on the year. And this is one of the best ends in football so, I mean, they, they got a lot of problems. But, yeah, they could stop. They could stop the Packers easily. But, you know, the year Aaron Rodgers is having, they might as well just call him Clarence Carter because he's yeah. stroking. Yeah. He's stroking. He's stroking. He's, he's, stroking. Stroking. he's stroking to the West. He's all over the fucking place. Oh, yeah. man. When it comes down to it, though, it's like one of those, when you go up against Aaron Rodgers, you got to be able to air it out the entire game. Just go toe for toe with the dude. And yeah. I don't really defense, know if he you know, like can do it. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, they got the age, ageless Charles Woodson over there. That dude, I swear to God, he's like pushing 40, but he plays like he's yeah. just coming into the league and getting into his yeah, I think prime. he's 62. He's got yeah. like seven fake hips. <laughs> I mean, he's just – everything's been replaced on that dude. And he's still doing it like he's the best player in football. And, you know, that whole team, it's, it's bar none. That's the top team in football. I don't want to hear nothing about it. I don't care about Steelers, Ravens, 49ers. They're all good teams. Top of the heap is the Green Bay Packers, and we'll see how our beloved Giants do against them. And all i got to say is, is uh, Rodgers, I saw a picture. I don't know if it's recent or if he shaved it off already, but he was rocking one Alicia stash. So yeah. i got to say, hey, good one, man. <laughs> he grew that shit out quick, too. Anytime, Anytime you got a stash rocking <laughs> of epic machismo like he had, it's just something about stashes and sports. They go together like, you know, meat and potatoes. Like, you know, we just saw of epicness. Delicious. You know it. Anyways, we'll shoot you out to commercial and we'll come back with a very special segment for all our true diehard fans. Hey, stick to it, huh? Bow. I'm sorry about the propane tanks in the underground uh, bunker. It's all I right. wish we could smoke, but that's how uh, we t- right. power ourselves. Oil's too expensive, boys. Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys. Well, I bring no armor, baby. That's all I can say. Sorry, sorry, here for a so, sorry guys. I can only... I understand. Tony, I can only do... Do you want a hug? Do you want a hug? No, okay. Let's save it for later. <laughs> but anyways, since we're all here and we're all out here, let's get down to business. Let's get down to proper things. Let's talk about things related to Watu. <clears throat> Start us off. Oh, Facebook. We got to throw the Facebook up there first and foremost with all the numerical numbers of mass destruction. You got it, people. Memorize it. It's like 8 billion numbers, but you can get it. It's no problem. It's nothing. 
They Use your mind Facebook.com backslash world according to us. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, just put it, it in the search bar. Put it, it in the search bar. Put world according You'll to us. You'll find it eventually. We'll pop up. You'll see these Johnny pretty mugs. G-spot. We're all there. Get, get on there and do it. Do the thing. Anything else? Oh, anything oh, else. Line. Anything else? else? How, about, how, about, how about the official website? www.watutv.com. It's brand new. Brand, yeah, brand new website. Reformatted. Reformatted. Oh, easy right to follow. Right you can, you nice can, and simplistic for you people. You can check out miscellaneous stuff. The new, everything that's up about us. You can Absolutely. go anywhere. Absolutely. Just check us out. You, that is the main source for Watu TV. Nine no doubt, man. Next. Yo, all I can say Sound effect coming up. Check us out right now on Twitter, man. Twitter. Twitter. Follow us. You want to be bird. us? You bitches. love us? You can't get enough of us. You Follow can't. us on Twitter. And don't forget, we've got over 185 videos. We are the kings of Give YouTube. Give us the crown right now. Give we are the, the kings crown. of YouTube. That's the last one. Learn it, live it, love it. We are the undisputed kings. I don't care if you got a million and a half views. You aren't as dedicated as us, and this is the place to find it. The home of Watu. We are on channel YouTube. Check us out. Eat it, bitches. Yep. <laughs> Wad to full effing sports. Back from a brief break, covering mass amount of topics in the sports industry. I think we covered basically everything but Tony's football, but there ain't really much. No football. Anyways, uh, now no football. Like I said before, when we cut out, bring back to our diehard fans because uh, I know we've been getting some messages saying they miss the wrestling according to us. So we're trying to integrate it. In the little parts. Unfortunately, people gotta understand. We gotta meet a bigger market, so that's why we brought the world into it. But you know where our roots lie. You know where our blood's falling. The wrestling, according to us, you know where we got roots. Is still around. Oh, you know it. You know it. Come on now. We're the top industry, top in the industry for wrestling talk shows. You got it, people. But with that being said, one thing that's got me kind of cheesing a, a, a quite a lot is uh, the possible return of Kane rocking a mask. Yeah. And I'm sorry, like, everybody goes, oh, go ahead. I'm like, nah, I, I dug it. I dug the Kane mask. I always felt bad for the dude because the shit looked quite uncomfortable. But, hey, he, he did it for how freaking long? So it's like, what? Time. Bust it back out, brother. Grow that hair back out. Rock the mask because it just it, it brought a whole new spectrum to that kind of, like, horror side of wrestling. Like well, not to mention that, but, but, you know, the biggest thing is is he's one ugly fucking dude. Yes. And I know we've said this before on previous Watus, but, man, he's got to be in a runner. He's got to be in a runner. And, I mean, I know I'm a sexy dude. I'm a bad dude, a sexy dude. I fill a lot of dude roles and runs in the family. Come on. But man. he's one ugly fucking dude, and I'm just being honest here. I'm just trying to lay it out. He's an ugly dude. <laughs> period. Plain and simple. You know, then they made him wear the, the multicolored eye contact. He just looked creepy. Didn't I work. get that was supposed to be the point. But there's creepy, scary, and there's creepy, ugly. And he's creepy, ugly. He's not creepy, scary. He's just creepy, ugly, you know? But, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if the mask would work without the hair. That's going to look a little odd. Uh, he ain't going to have yeah. time to have grown the hair back. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of I weird. mean, he might have been able, at this point, to get it, like, shoulder length. He's been out for so long. But, you know... The mask, I would dig it. I would definitely dig it. And, you know, the whole rumors are maybe it'll be Kane versus Undertaker at WrestleMania, you know. Then there's Kane versus Brock at WrestleMania. You know, who the hell knows? It's going to be Undertaker, Kane versus Brock. Brock versus Undertaker at WrestleMania. Kane versus Undertaker at WrestleMania. The end result is someone will take on the Undertaker yeah. at WrestleMania. He's got his one pray to God it's not... Alberto Del Rio, yeah. or The Miz, or R Truth, or you know, uh, none Santino. Of the nowadays, guys. You know, no, 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 come no, on, you know, you, you know. got to keep a match of that caliber to yeah. a specific genre of wrestlers, and there's only a choice few that can still get in there and do it. You know, you know some people are saying Triple H because we haven't heard squat from him since WrestleMania either. He had his little go as the the running Raw, and they kicked him out. Vote of confidence, this, that, and the other horse shit. So, I mean, maybe it's Triple H. He comes back for one last hurrah himself. Who knows? Either way, Undertaker could be coming back, and that'll be big news. I know they're doing some vignettes about uh, it's coming or something like that. It could be The Undertaker. Who knows? I don't know. You know, but, uh, you know, hey, it'll just be good to have The Undertaker back. Yeah. Get this whole last ride started. Cause that's what this is. It's the last ride. Yeah. So, you know, get ready for it. You know, don't sit there and go, oh, he shouldn't retire bullshit. He's an old man. Yeah. He's doing it right. Let him go out on top. And, uh, you know, the streak, 20-0. He's going to walk away. 
I, I'd like him to lose because traditionally in the wrestling business, you know, we've been backstage at, you know, events. We've, we've stepped in the ring ourselves. It's a common thing. When you're done, you go out on your back. That's just, you know, the common knowledge. It's coming full circle. So yep. when you go out, you should go out on your back and, you know, go out putting someone else over that's going to still be there when you're gone. But it is the Undertaker. It is the streak. And if it's the last time, let him have 20, you know, and then right off into the sunset. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when it comes to something like that, I'm not an argue. Like you said, I'm on. The, I'm kind of on the fence with it. I mean, yeah, you. in all actuality, you should go for pushing whoever's going to be there afterwards. But unfortunately, due to the fact that you can't put none of these new guys in this match and have them beat the Taker, no. it's not going to happen. And any of the guys that you do put in, they're already basically got a pretty high enough stature to where you're not going to be really pushing them anymore. You know, Kane's Kane. What are you going to do, get Brock in here? Everybody knows It's, it's got to be a big name. Yeah, you know there's I mean? no doubt about it. Like, if you put out a Del Rio and have him put him over, that's that's some bullshit. I will probably well, like I said, first off, I don't think he's going to lose. But more importantly, if he's not going to lose, you just can't have him go out there and beat Rey Mysterio. Mm. This has got to be somebody. And John Cena and The Rock are already tied up. Austin's not going to come back and wrestle. No. Triple H, maybe. Happen. Brock, I don't think Dana White's going to risk an injury to one of his top stars for for Vince. I mean, I know Vince has got deep pockets. Maybe he can make it happen. I think there's too much for Dana White to lose, so I don't think it's going to be Brock Lesnar. You know, I know Tony's always been infatuated with Sting taking on The Undertaker. Uh, it's just, just not going to happen. happen. Sting will never come to the WWE. And he's not going to come for one match considering he spent his whole career in other federations. It's just, it's not going to happen. No, There's no it's just fucking not way happen. Hell. You know, Shawn Michaels is gone, so it ain't going to be him. But I still, you know, I, I think it'd probably be Triple H. Yeah, It'll probably sense. be Triple H. It'll be their third bout at WrestleMania, and they'll go out with a bang. Both of them. Maybe they'll just both beat the holy hell out of each other. And it's a draw, you know. Yeah. Undertaker will be nineteen zero and one. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Can you be nineteen zero and one? Do they didn't even do draws in, in wrestling anymore? Yeah, there's a double knockout. Oh, uh, yeah. See, two it's guys get knocked out. So it's been a long double time disqualification. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know, on an interesting side note, I was on a couple of the dirt sheets earlier, and uh, I actually was just on Facebook, and I noticed our boys over at Wrestling in Session said something yeah, about it. But uh, I've been hearing rumors of a Chris Benoit movie what? being made in Hollywood. Wow. A, you know, from beginning to end, Chris Benoit tale. So what do you think about that? Uh, that's 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 pretty epic, man. I know there's going to be a lot of haters towards it, but I'll guarantee you I'll be first in line to end up checking that out. Yeah, I'll definitely end up I mean, checking that out. Graded on how it went out, but there's a bunch of speculations to that. You know, I mean, you got to understand. We're just saying the focus of the movie, too, won't just be necessarily on steroids. They're going to focus, too, on the fact that, you know, head trauma has been known to cause a lot of problems. I mean, in the NFL, you know, there's a lot of old-timers that have been offing themselves lately, and it's because of depression and this funky, you know, the, the head trauma. Yeah, it's a concussion. serious thing. A former wrestler named Chris Nowinski actually started this whole research into brain trauma because NFL and professional wrestlers take an inor in inordinary amount of head trauma. Chair shots landing on your head, head-on collisions. You know, and it's a scary thing. You rattle that up there. I mean, that's like scrambled eggs in there. Yeah. You knock that around enough, it could turn a switch on or two. So maybe it wasn't just steroids that made Benoit snap. Maybe he was just going batshit crazy too and the steroids didn't help. Who knows? But it'll be an interesting take. I think it'll work. I mean, really, it's an interesting story to tell because I'm tired. Here's my biggest problem. I'm tired of it being so goddamn taboo in professional wrestling to mention the name Chris Benoit. Yeah. Yep. And I don't think it's right that you can just erase everything that he accomplished in the ring. Now, what he did was wrong, and we've said this thousands of times on the show, especially our first couple of seasons. I think we dedicated a show to this. But whether it's right or wrong doesn't matter because it all preceded what he did first. And what he did first was have a hell of a long wrestling career that was successful and full of good moments. Everybody's focused on this last day of his life where nobody knows what happens. But I know for a fact that he looked like one happy man when he was picking his kid up in the middle of the ring when he won his first championship at WrestleMania. Yep. It was a genuine moment. 
And I know it. I, I saw it with my own eyes. It was a genuine moment when him and Brett, a year after Owen died, got it on in Kemper Arena, you know, 100 feet below where Owen made his last dive and had one of the best matches and really respected each other and the emotions were flying. This wasn't a guy that through his whole career was this psycho. So, you know, to judge a guy based on the last day of his life without knowing the facts and figures is wrong. And hopefully the movie opens up the ability for that scar to heal. Yeah. I think a movie's going to kind of be like picking at a scab and we can finally take it off and go, the guy had a bum thing going on at the end. There's no doubt about it. It's wrong. And killing your kid is just the most despicable thing. He's, he's making muffins without an oven in hell right now. There's no doubt about it. But the guy did it in the ring. Yeah, I he mean, did it in the ring. You can't take problem. that away from him. No, you can't. You know what I mean? No, if can't. he was here, no you way. could put him in jail for what he did. If he's dead and he's in hell, then whatever. But you can't take away what he did in the ring. It happened. And I'm so tired of Vince and the assholes just washing it all up. Yeah. I mean, due to one little... I mean, it's not a little circumstance. I, sh- I got to revoke that, but... I mean, that last situation, like you said, it was unbearable, you know, but you cannot wipe out an entire career of epic stature because, I mean, we're, we're all about the epic, you know what I'm saying? And Benoit has to take the cake. Um, I don't think there was any matches that I didn't enjoy, you know what I'm saying? Even his crummy ones with, like, Sid Vicious or whatnot, you know, they were still pretty epic nonetheless because, I mean, the dude knew how to move it. He knew how to get it on in the ring. He knew how to... You know, get the crowd worked up, you know, and all that happy horse shit. But. And the thing is, is, is today's wrestler, the guys that are big now, you know, uh, AJ Styles or CM Punk or John Morrison or Davey Richards, they won't admit it on camera because of the companies they work with, but I guarantee you, much like me, because they're all basically my age, I guarantee you that one of the most influential wrestlers in all of their careers growing up was a guy like Chris Benoit. It was Chris Benoit. It was Bret Hart. It was Ric Flair. It was these wrestlers, this technician style of wrestling, and Benoit was one of the greatest of all time. Easily. So let's stop ignoring it. Let's get a movie out there. Who the hell plays him, though? <laughs> Honestly. That's a I mean, that guy a had film. a look all of his own. You know what guy I was thinking of? Uh, the Bondy guy there, James Bond. You oh, gotta yeah. work. What's his name? I mean, he's yeah, at least got a body. You know yeah, what I mean? Because the guy's gotta kind of be squat and kind of, you know, nobody's gonna go out there and do roids to where you're like yeah. Benoit and you have the little T Rex arms. Ah, yeah. bang, you know. But I'm saying, you know, you gotta have yeah, a guy that can act. And you know, do, do you think it's gonna be that big time of a flick? I to, hope it is. To get an actor I think like it deserves that. It. You know, I think it does too. But it's honestly, a great story. Yeah, I mean, you're talking a about story. a guy that wasn't supposed to be much in wrestling, worked himself up, and you know. Busted his ass for, you know, 20 years to get to the top, got to the top, broke his ass to do it, and then it all came crashing down in one unfortunate evening. Yeah. You look how the wrestler turned out, I bet you that one probably top at bar none. You know and the wrestling what I'm was good. Yes, wrestling it was. was. good. But, wiping that clean, let's go over in one more segment, and then we'll call it a wrap. Uh, I hear WWE is finally opening his ears to getting rid of the spinner belt, no. which I am beyond ecstatic about, because I fucking hate that title and if you want to hate me for it fine but you got to bring back that old school one especially when you got the world heavyweight championship from the old wcw days and the old school days that would be perfect and the they just brought back the uh the old uh intercontinental yes is it cody rose yep. or whoever's holding yep. it now because it probably changed i think he's rocking but, uh, it with the white strap too yeah, like old Shawn school Michaels. boxy rectangle-ish yep. intercontinental so bring it back and then after that Bring back the tag titles, because those fucking copper yeah, pennies. Those pennies. The penny belts. belt has got to go. Shit. God. You know, the spinner belt and the penny belt and that fruity pebble belt that Jeff Hardy had in TNA are by far the three worst belts I've ever seen in my life. Ever. And I hope to God Reg Parks, the guy, you know, Reg Park that does all those belts, didn't do those, because those are god-awful. That purple thing in TNA, the spinner belt, and then... Giant, god-awful penny belts. God. <laughs> just get rid of all of them, bring back the good stuff, and get back to just having a classic, elegant title that yeah. shows class, shows honor. I can't take a guy seriously when he's got this cartoonish spinner belt. I can't do it. No, you can't. It does, I mean, it looks, like it's, <coughs> it looks like something some kid should buy at Toys R Us or something like that, honestly. I mean, with... 
the fact that it's encrusted with diamonds. It's like, all right, you're just getting a little too ridiculous. That's the problem I got is that the WWE will never let that other title mean more than the spinner belt. The spinner belt will always be the biggest title because it's the WWE title. And WCW and NWA's old title can never be as big as the WWE's title. But if that's the case, fine. Get rid of that fucking belt, though. Yeah, make Bring back the big eagle like yeah. Hogan and Brett Rock. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Or even like that, you know, the newer one that the uh, the Rock and Stone Cold and Triple H held where it was a little bit bigger. One of those, but that freaking spinner thing has got to go. Yeah, you got to get go. that right out the door. I mean, you, you're bringing a disgrace almost to the industry because I just, I don't see how something like that can be involved in wrestling. You know what I'm saying? And, and the fact that when you see it laying down, it's probably like, Two inches thick, you know what I'm saying? So imagine a guy having to carry that around and whatnot. No, you know? it's just match the beauty of the the uh, the SmackDown title there. Oh no, There's the no World Heavyweight anymore. Championship. No, that's the easily the greatest title of all time, bar none. Oh, I yeah. mean, with the history behind it and the fact that it's just one of the coolest looking belts of all time. You know, when you think of a championship, you got that big old plaque. There, there's no touching it, Johnny. There's no touching it at all. You know what I'm saying? Snow to root. So don't touch it. Well, I guarantee you, if they sat it right in front of me and said, hey, you want to win this time? I'll be like, fucking A, sir. You got it? Well, I think that's a wrap, people. I think uh, the JV-ster and the G-ster finally uh, got out as much as they possibly could. So, with that being said, we'll give you a, a good night salute and thank you for your time. Like always, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, for me, for him, we're here. You're you. For our brethren that are not with us, they show you bad love too. Y'all have a great night. Stay tuned for next week. Oh, freeform credits. Another fine show, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, memories. Like the corner of my mind. The Lord knows we got plenty of them. Misty watercolor, man. Hey, you know. I have a memory. Oh, that's always a good sign. Yes, a memory. A memory. A memory of a challenge. A memory of a time when we used to get a little angry. Ooh. We used to put a little bass in our voice. We used to get a little pissed off. That's right. That's right. We used to do a little thing called wordplay. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Tony, tonight, gee, I'm challenging all of you. Because, unlike times past, we have a marker to bear for who is the Watu Wordplay Champion. Yes. Oh, look at that Yours shininess. For $15.99 at Walmart. I'll be happy to rock that. Yeah, you know when you win wordplay. Oh, I'll get it. Don't you worry. When you, Don't you worry about take it. on the champ oh. in wordplay, when you step up to the ring, you look into it, and you see the baddest thing going yet, then yeah, you can. You think you got what it takes? Oh, I know. You think you got what it takes be a showdown. to dethrone the JV star for another run at wordplay? Oh, I don't know if I ever did in the can. first place. But I remember, I'm feeling the creative juices flowing. Yes. So, and you Let's know so the here. baddest motherfucker in the game oh. loves to get out some aggression. See, that looks right. That looks right. Not, not it looks judge. right. It looks, it looks okay it, on you. It looks but right, it looks but great it on feels me. wrong. This is oh, what oh, feels oh, right. Oh, oh, that's All what right. Got. I'm better than bad. I'm the best of the best. Better than all. Fuck the rest. I am the real athlete, Johnny V. And with that comes the return of Watu Wordplay next week, gentlemen. Next week. All right? Tony, have you brushed up? Have you brushed up? Because next week, I want you. All right? Me and you. Next week, Watu Wordplay. Get your shoes on. Tie him up real tight, old school style. You get a wrestler, I'll get a wrestler. We'll get in front of the camera. We'll see who's going on. Is the belt going to be on the line every week? No. It'll be here, but we'll figure out how to work that out. But either way, there That's will, the fans are gonna have to there come will be a prize 
for Watu Wordplay this year, and as of right now, it is vacant. All right, I'll make that clear. But make no doubts about it. If this was last year, I'd be rocking this right now. So with that being said, that's for another another week. Another week. Another week. Yeah, I'm still press fast forward until that moment. You know what I'm saying? Just fast forward. Magic of editing. You gotta oh, yeah. love it. We'll just be like, peek, next week. Oh, you know what it is? It's, it's just that, you know, I'm doing the cooking thing, so I'm really wearing my panties now, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm just missing doing crocheting and macrame, and, you know, that'll be that. You're talking about sports, and you can get animated about it, but, you know, whatever. Tony talks about movies, but he spends more time telling us to shut up <laughs> than he does actually talking about movies. Denise talks about music, and we've covered a lot of things, but nobody gets pissed off about music. music everybody loves music. In some form or another, so there's nothing really to get the verb going. Nothing to get us pissed off. Nothing to bring us to the cusp of what we once were. To show that we are what we say we are. We are the best. We bring it like it's nobody's fucking business. We've done it since 2000. We've been doing it for 10 plus years. Blood, sweat, and tears. We work our nine to fives. We put in 30 plus hours a week doing what we're doing now in front of you. We are the most committed. We are the most committed. No, and I mean that. Touch it. We should be in fucking Bellevue. Yeah. No joke about it. So here's the deal, folks. You keep tuning in. We'll keep entertaining. We'll keep kicking your asses. Until next week, for g -Spot, for me, Tony Denage, we'll see you next week. Oh, you want a you want tug of war? You want a tug of war? Uh, bing! Oh, no! Oh, yeah, cheap oh, Rocky! 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 You're Drago, bitch. You're going down. I break you. Pain.